Kelly, today's question and conversation is when do you know it's the right time to start a real estate team and for you and i to be working together and running together for the past eight years gosh you and i have been on the journey the ups and the downs the roller coaster and we've also seen many many other agents start teams and quit teams and do it the right way and do it the wrong way so i'm excited to have this conversation with you and do you remember when we started working together. Yeah. So starting a team, great topic and question to begin with too. Um, but yeah, when I started, it was like, gosh, I'm going to work in a real estate office. This is going to be so fun. I'm just going to answer, you know, the phone and, and connect people with agents. And man, it has been so much more and so much more of a blessing than just answering phones. Yeah. So much fun, so much opportunity, and and so much learning. What has been so interesting with our growth is oftentimes we are in a bubble intentionally be, and separated from the river where everyone else is going with the flow and, and being rushed away and swept away with the current. And so I like that we we have very much used outside resources, books, and coaches and wise counsel to help us with direction all at the same time we said you know what we're not going to do it that way we're going to try it this way so we've just continued to try things to test things to fail but then figure it out and i feel like we've landed at a really really great setup and situation so when do you know it's the right time to start a team Kelly, we talked about this yesterday and you said, hey, I feel like the, the audience for this topic kind of fits a particular mold. You mentioned a few people that we know. Can you kind of map out who that agent is, maybe where they are in their business, the pain points that they have and the desires they, they may have as well to kind of preface who this topic is for? Yeah. So if you're a real estate agent, I would say with, you know, at least a year or two of experience. Um, and you've got a successful real estate career, you know, you're closing deals, um, you're busy, you're showing homes, you're writing offers, you're doing CMAs, and you are the only one that's doing this. And your calendar is becoming really full between lead generating and servicing your customers and going to closings and ordering those closing gifts. And it's just an endless to-do list and you're starting to feel that. Um, business is cutting into your family time. It's cutting into your self-care time. Um, it's cutting into like your most important priorities because real estate is what you do, but it's not who you are. And I feel like if, if you're losing yourself in that real estate, um, and this is for you. Um, could a team be for you at this point? And I think if not a full team, definitely some leverage. Um, but that is the target audience for this. Real estate is starting to run your life um, instead of you running your real estate business. That's a great way to put it. So if we were to say in terms of deals, probably 12 plus deals, I would say in terms of volume, depending on your price point, two, three, four million plus in volume per year. <clears throat> and there's a couple signs that may be indicators that, hey, I, I'm definitely need to start considering a team. And, and those signs are positive signs and also negative pain points. But if you feel like you don't have enough hours in the day, if you feel like things are just beginning to fall through the cracks and you're, you have like this dark cloud of stress following you, you're not able to unplug, then those are all really good signs. So there's a many reasons that agents decide to start teams. And I think that would be a great separate video of the reasons why to actually create a team in the first place. And then there's also, um, another topic that we can talk about regarding teams of, of how to start teams, like the actual how to, but this is, how do you know when? 
And I just want to also back up and say, we're going to tell you these signs of how you know when, but I do want to caution you to stress test and kind of like fact check, like, is a team right for you? And I think that will definitely be another video. Is a team right for you? Because we had a very dear agent who's a fantastic agent. Everybody loves him. He started a team and the team model was just not right for him. And he actually dissolved the team within the same year. He said, this is a disaster. It's sucking the life out of me. I don't want to have anything to do with this. So he was kind of like following this model of a successful growing agent should, the next step is to start a team, start a team, start a team. Well, we're not subscribed to that. So there's different strokes for different folks. And don't just go along with things because that's what everyone says you need to do. So I would say, I would start with this. How do you know it, it's time to start thinking about starting a team? Well, it starts with, well, let me ask you, Kelly. And you came on after I had already brought on one agent partner. Mm -hmm. So you and I actually didn't have the, co the initial conversations of Josh deciding whether or not to start a team. You were my, at what stage? I know Henny was with me. Mm -hmm. And then that's when I brought on you. Yeah, there was, there was another agent as well. So there were wow. two agents plus you, who yeah. you were in production at the time. So three agents, working agents. Um, and then I came into that environment that kind of was already, you know, rolling. Yeah. Yep. So when it comes to vision, how do you feel that an agent's personal vision is going to influence their decision of whether or not to start a team? The agent's vision, I feel like is kind of the most important aspect of the team, right? If you, if you are going to be the team leader, that vision is what the team is created around because you're, I mean, and, and we'll, I know we've said, we'll go into how you, how you start a team and what you're looking for and, and how to do it. But that vision is that common bond that, you know, really keeps everyone together. Mm -hmm. So I would say how important is that vision? It's, it's everything. It's everything. So being super clear on what that is, is really important not to just jump in and be like, okay, I'm going to start a team. And, you know, most people want to go, okay, leads, but you've got to slow down and decide what do you stand for mm. that you want to bring others into and push out into the world. Yeah, you're so right. So for everyone watching and listening to this, our YouTube video cast and our podcast, what is your vision? What is your vision that you cast for your life and then also for others? What do you stand for? What do you want to be about? What are you about? Who do you want to become? Everything starts with vision. There's a scripture, I don't know the reference, but it says without vision, the people will die. And so what is the vision for your real estate career? Larger, what is your vision for your life? Because until you're clear with that vision for your life, then you're kind of putting the cart before the horse, building your business. Because unless you know the vision for your life, how can you build a business that supports your life? And then once you get clear with that, you create the vision for your business. You know, what do you want your business to be about? How do you want it to serve you? And you can get, you can go down the rabbit hole of how often do I want my energy to be focused on real estate? How many hours a week do I want to spend time working on real estate? Where do I want my physical body to be required? Do I want to physically be in the community with customers? What do I want? And you know, how do I want my real estate business to fund my life? So you get specific with income, get specific with wealth building. So I know this is like, oh man, this is so deep and so heavy. 
right, Kelly? Like it's easy to get bottomed out in this deep, really energy sucking time in our mind. And what would you say to someone that says, ah, just give me the checklist. Like, let me, let me, I just want to jump in and get going. And they kind of skip the whole foundational vision discovery. If you skip the foundation and really slowing down to think about your vision, you run the risk of the team just collapsing. Like you have no foundation. The vision is your foundation. If you don't have that foundation, it's not going to hold together, right? It's not going to serve your life, right? Like Josh is saying, like your your finances, your wealth building, your time, like how much time do you want to be investing in um, your team and in real estate business itself? So if that foundation isn't there, you know, the, the people that you're going to attract to join your team as well, if there's not that common bond with the vision, it will all just fall apart. And it may not fall apart <laughs> right away. It'll fall apart down the road. And it's just more and more painful as you get to that point. So, so painful. Yeah. So so slowing down right at the beginning to be super clear and, and definitive on, on what that vision is and what you're going to stand for is so important to save you the headache and the heartache later. If you build your house on sand, it will all wash away. And you'll look back and say, that was wasted time, wasted energy, wasted money. I wish I would have built my house on a rock. And that's exactly what we're talking about vision. How do you want your real estate business and career to serve your marriage, to serve your family as you parent your kids, to serve your key relationships, to serve your community? This is all foundational vision that you build your business, your life upon, and your future team upon. So a team may not be right for you. Once you discover what you want in your vision and in your life, going down the conventional team route may be the, the worst thing that you can do. And then you create, what do I want the team to stand for? Which is your core values. And that is your core values. And then also the core values of your team. And then that's the foundation that you build the frame of your house upon. Basically, if you really want to make this simple, what do you want? What do you want in life? What do you want in your business? And then once you establish that, that's how you begin to construct the dynamics of your team. There's a lot of different models and ways to build a team outside of the conventional way everyone says you're supposed to do it. And it all comes down to what you want. So this is everyone's homework. Get clear on what you want and to just sell more homes. That's not deep enough to make more money. That's not deep enough. So I would really peel the layers of the onion back and say, no, this is who I am. This is what I stand for. This is what I want to be about. This is where I foresee my life. And this is how I want my business to serve my life. This is so clear on what I see, uh, how my business works within my life. And as a result, in order to achieve all of that, the next step is building some form of a real estate team. And that's long-term goals. I mean, when we talk about building a team, Kelly, what kind of time horizon or long-term goals should someone consider? I was just going to ask you that question. <laughs> like, we're not just thinking like a year out, right? Like, I want to start my team and this is my goal for next year. When you've got that vision, it should be that long-term vision, more than just one year out, more than two years out, three years out, long-term. So Josh, when you started the thinking process of like, gosh, like a team is probably the right step in my life for me right now. How far out were you thinking years, years wise? Minimum of five to seven years, easy five to seven years. I mean, for me, it was in an indefinite amount of time, meaning um, this is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to build something and I'm going to build it permanently. And this is going to be the, the, the hill that I plant my flag on. So for me, I was all in and fully committed. But what I didn't realize is what everyone was telling me to do 
actually didn't align with what I wanted it out of my business. Meaning the conventional is bring on a lot of admin, advertise a lot to get a ton of leads, to bring on a ton of agents, to sell a ton of homes and make a ton of money. Mm -hmm. I started down that path. And I think this is going to transition into this next thing is come up with your plan and work your plan rather mm -hmm. than actually taking someone else's word for it and just blindly following their lead and following the model and following the book and just going with the flow of the current question everything. Mm -hmm. That's something you and I have done mm -hmm. over eight years. Can you think back? And I know I kind of putting you on the spot, but like where we began to discover that the wizard of Oz is not everything it's cracked up to be. And when we began to pull back the curtain and question everything, Man, it was a total circus. <laughs> yeah. And I think, you know, follow your your plan in our area, our local area. There's a lot of real estate teams and there's a lot of successful real estate teams that look very differently. And so I think that's important is it's the team is not a one size fits all. Um, there's lots of different structures that work a lot of different ways that you can make work for you and your vision and what's important for you. Yeah. So yeah, once we kind of were down like the traditional model, I guess, of building a team and it was like, gosh, like this isn't necessarily the direction we want to head. Um, we're able to do different things that work for us. Yeah. I want to give some examples. One thing I didn't want to do was babysit other grown adults. I didn't want to micromanage. I didn't want to grow big just to be big and be number one with numbers that really don't matter. My reason, my vision for building this team in this business is to create wealth for many people that I enjoy being together that are cut from this a similar cloth and stand for the same values. And we all create wealth together. For Josh Rogers, it's all about synergy and it's more fun together with people you enjoy being together. So right off the bat, some team models is recruit, 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 add, 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 throw agents against the wall and see who sticks. Now, a lot of a lot of organizations and people will say, you got to find a culture fit. You got to find a culture fit. But when the rubber meets the road, these jokers are just bringing anybody and everybody on. And when you look at organizations, you're like, if I could try to describe their culture in a couple words, it's impossible because it feels like it's out of um, Rudolph. It's, it's like mis, the misfit toy island. There's not really any cohesive commonalities. And so for my plan, uh, we decided we're not going to bring on anybody and everybody. We're not just going to throw them against the wall and see what sticks. We're not going to chase numbers for numbers sake. We're going to make smart decisions that fuel everyone's businesses and lives. And to that, here's a specific tactic that we, we said, we're not going to go for all of Northeast Florida. We're going to focus in on our target market within a 20 minute driving radius because I didn't want to be driving an hour and a half to go sell a show houses or list a house. And so that's definitely something that we've done differently than other organizations is we are a medium team that's hyper focused on a farm area within 15 minutes because that serves our life that serves and protects our quality of life. And we're not in the car, you know, all day, every day. Another thing, Kelly, is when we started, you know, really tightening up our profit and loss, mm -hmm. which will be another video that we do, man, so much value that we've learned through that is I realized that I could be making more money if I was a solo agent versus running a team. There's so many reasons that a conventional model without a lot of 
tweaks and nuances um, makes team leaders go broke. Mm -hmm. It's because you're chasing the wrong numbers and the last number on your list of priorities is profit. So keep in mind, there's many different types of team models. We will do a video on that. You can stay small, lean, and mean, highly profitable when it comes to money. What's the cost? It's going to cost you more of your time, your focus, your energy, and physical involvement. You can build a medium-sized team where you're still producing, still selling, but you have to have the infrastructure, the framework, the admin, the overhead, and just a few agents. And so you're, you're very, you're not profitable. You're very not making money. That's called the messy middle. We'll do a video on that. Mm -hmm. And then you can scale beyond that, which is where we are. We have 14 amazing agent partners. And that's where you're, we have the infrastructure and the hub built so we're able to scale on top of that and not increase a ton of overhead. And so then it's when you get back into profit and also more freedom of time, more freedom of energy, more freedom of physically having to be somewhere. And then you can scale beyond that and really begin to scale into a large team, 25, 35, 50 agents. And that's where you're going to have to rebuild the hub you know, to be able to scale with so many more transactions. So that rebuilding of the hub is going to take your, your uh, overhead and your monthly obligations to the next level. And so you have to scale beyond that second messy middle to get back into profit. So that was just kind of a quick taste of the different dynamics of the teams. So with you kind of hit on some of like pain points there of running the team, profitability being one, a, an investment of your time and energy. What would you say are some of those other pain points to where it may not be the right decision for someone? Yeah. Okay. So the pain point of starting a team when the team may not be right for you, is that what you're saying? Yes. If you rush into building a team, you're going to do it the wrong way and you're going to bring on the wrong people that's going to backfire and it's going to create so much stress frustration annoyances and you're going to say you know what this is sucking the life out of me i don't need this and you're going to burn it all down that's if if you build it the wrong way if you're not a leader and a good communicator the number one job of a leader is to cast vision without vision the people perish and so not only do you need to have a large vision for you and your business but you need to have a vision large enough for the other people that decide to follow you and then you have to be able to properly communicate that to them and then inspire them towards that vision just because you're a great agent and you sell a lot of homes doesn't mean that you can lead other people. Also, if you don't sell a lot of homes, that doesn't mean that you're not a good leader and good communicator. But if you think just because you sell a lot of homes and you're generating a lot of leads that you're going to be able to build a team, yeah, you may be able to bring some people on, but people know very quickly whether or not they're with a good strong leader and whenever they realize that you're not a good leader then they'll leave and that's another part of the team model i'm in this in the long for the long run to pour into other people and their lives and their families and their quality of life i don't like the revolving door and whenever you have lackluster leadership that's the result of a revolving door. So there's other, you're like, all right, Josh, well, I may not be a strong leader. There's other like quasi models for teams. That's a completely different topic. Kind of to land the plane and start to kind of wrap things up. How would an agent know that considering a team is the next right move for them? What are some of those desires that take people to this next step in the process? Cool. I would look at your track record because our track record speaks louder than anything in our life. 
have you built community? Have you led other people? Is that, has that been a reoccurring theme and a desire of your life? Are you growth oriented? Are you growth minded? Has that been a theme of your life? And if so, the desire is, I love community. I love pouring into people. I love helping people win and see their success and see them break through. Like I love people. So that's desire number one. You got to love people. You got to love mentoring, coaching, training, pouring into people. If you're like, oh man, I don't want to get stuck in the weeds. That's like, like Michael Jordan, not a good leader. Best of all time. Greatest of all time basketball player. He drug his team with him just out of the sheer necessity that he wanted to win so badly. But he was not a good leader. Like nobody liked him. And so, and, and I could absolutely see, Kelly, you and I can see other personalities in the real estate business that lead like Jordan. Yeah. Are you dragging people along or are you inspiring the charge to come along with you? Yep. Yeah. You're, you're leading out of inspiration rather than leading out of fear and, and intimidation. And so then other desires, if you have a desire to grow something bigger than yourself, to stand for something bigger than yourself, a team gives you an incredible platform. Uh, other desires would be if you want uh, more energy, if you want more kind of mind freedom and more time freedom, building a team can help pull you out of as many personal transactions and you can leverage yourself completely out of personal transactions. So you're no longer working directly with buyers and sellers. And that's going to give you energy freedom, mind freedom, time freedom, and physical freedom. If you want a little bit more of a hedge to the real estate roller coaster when it comes to income by creating a team that that helps kind of like spread the low of the highs and the lows. I think if you love community, real estate is lonely. That's kind of something that we've discussed and talked about a lot is real estate is lonely and it can be really stressful and it can also be really joyful too. Like both ends of that spectrum. But I know when I'm having conversations with my family, there's a point when the focus, like I can see it leave their eyes, right? They just don't get it, right? So if you have the desire to, to have a community um, to share the highs and the lows and strategize with, um, building a team, absolutely. If you have a desire for a community, um, a team is, is a wonderful, wonderful place to, or a thing to have that brings people together, sharing joys, helping in those lows. And, and I know we have a, a chat thread on our team and it's constantly going constant support, constant encouragement. If you want to serve more families, a team is a way to do that. If you want to make more money. When you build a team the right way, you can get there. It takes time. It just comes down to building it the right way and building it your way. That's in alignment with your vision. I can't stress that enough. I talked to a couple uh, local team leaders and they're not clear on their vision. They're not clear on their culture. They're not clear on, you know, the, the avatar of their agent. And so it's just kind of a hodgepodge. And then it turns into, it's just all about leads and selling houses. And, and for me, that's empty. Yep. Yeah. You'll, you won't foster that community when there's not a common thread. Yep. And then it's just a revolving door. I mean, people will join you for leads and they'll leave you for leads. And then you look back and you're like, man, all we did was just sell a couple of houses. Was it worth it? I could have done so much more. It would have been so much more rewarding and fulfilling, like actually making impact. That's really cool. So we have so much to talk about and so much to cover. And I'm incredibly excited because I wish there were conversations like this that Kelly and I could have listened into and watched along the way, because that would have just given us such a breath of fresh air. 
We don't micromanage our, our team agents. We don't babysit them. I say, you know, I've wiped enough poopy heinies with my own family that I'm not going to do it with our real estate team. And it's freeing and it's liberating. So we have a lot to, to do. So Kelly, awesome. I'll see you on the next discussion. And any and all viewers and listeners, please send us your questions and your topics that you would like for us to cover so we can give you just maybe a different perspective to consider on your journey. So we'll see you next time. Bye.